Jeremy Clements is your definition of a small NASCAR team. He's the underdog that any fan likes to root for. To his credit, he's made it to victory lane twice in his 464 Xfinity Series starts, which puts him fifth all-time in the series. Will he claim victory in 2024? We sat down with the driver-owner of the number 51 team to find out. And now I'd like to welcome to the channel Jeremy Clements. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate you joining us on Beating and Banging here today. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. All right, Jeremy. So this past season is complete. We're going into 2024. But I understand you had an interesting offseason with a new addition. Tell me about that. Yeah, definitely so. I finally decided to join the, the parent world, and we uh, we finally had a baby. So uh, I didn't honestly see that on the radar. Uh, we were kind of happy the way way it was going, but this uh, this came along, and and uh, man, it's been a you know it's about we're about one month in or a little over, and it's been a it's been a lot of fun. And it's a lot of work, a lot of dirty diapers. Wow. I never knew that uh, you go through so many diapers and wipes, but what a, what a blessing it is, honestly. I can't wait to watch her grow and be the best father I can be for. That's fantastic. So let's go back to last season. So th it was a weird year for you. You finished 19th. It was the first time <laughs> you didn't have any top 10s since 2011 after the previous two years of going back-to-back -back in the playoffs. So kind of just summarize for me last year because i know you encountered some bad luck and some misfortune along the way so talk to me a little bit let's recap the 2023 campaign for you well we certainly had some terrible luck black cloud over us i mean there was a lot of good runs the 10 probably top five that got taken away definitely top tens i could start naming them and telling you where they went wrong but honestly just getting wrecked uh there at the end uh, you know a lot of bad luck, things breaking, uh, wheels loose at Bristol, uh, even though we had a fast car. Um, just a lot of circumstance stuff, which I can't believe that we couldn't just get through one of those and, and reel off the top 10 or top five. Uh, I mean, Carolina at Talladega, running six, literally get wrecked, finished 24, uh, coming to the line. So, I mean, it just, just, one of those years, man, I don't know. It just sucked, and it is what it is, but uh, I like to close the chapter on 2023 and look ahead to this year and not even think about all that last year. So before we go into this season, coming into the year, I believe I read somewhere that you have 464 career starts in the Xfinity Series, which is fifth all time. If you if you get the 33 starts this season, that'll tie you for fourth, I believe, with Mike Wallace. And then next season and the following season, you need 50 more wins to equal Kenny Wallace for all-time Xfinity starts. So just looking back on your career, did you ever see it getting to this point where you would be in the top five of all-time Xfinity starts? And now you have the potential to really break it in the next coming couple of years. Oh man, no, I never even thought that was, that was never even a thought to me. I mean, that's a lot of races. I mean, I didn't, it's crazy to hear that really, but yeah, I've been doing this a long time and love it. I have the passion, the drive to do it, keep doing it for some reason, either I'm, I'm dumb or just love, no, I just love racing. I've always loved racing. So just keep uh, trucking and uh, see how it goes this year. And hopefully we have the opposite of last year, like I said already, and uh, keep on getting those starts and better finishes this year. But, uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool though. Nonetheless, you know, I watched the top five growing up, like Jason Keller raced with Mike Wallace and Kane Wallace, but, uh, yeah, pretty cool nonetheless. And, and it would be awesome to be number one. I mean, I never set out to do that, but hell might as well. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Talking about the expectations for this season, I know a couple of years ago when we talked and I talked with Tommy Joe Martins about this the other day, and we talked about it several years ago, is the competition has definitely ramped up over the last couple of years in the Xfinity series. So now this year, you know, you have Cole Custer returning as the champion. You have Austin Hill who won multiple races. You have all these different drivers coming in, and one of them is Shane Van Gisbergen. So I'm just curious, before we talk about your team, your thoughts on the competition 
including Van Gisbergen, who proved last year in Chicago against the Cub drivers that he knows how to wheel it around a road course. So just give me your thoughts initially on the competition and how it's ramped up over the last couple of years and what your thoughts are on the 2024 competition. From what I've seen so far, it's going to be even tougher this year, competition level wise, if you're not on your game. The last year was definitely a step up. All the, even all the smaller teams like myself, they all, everybody ramped up, leasing Indians, buying new cars, newer chassis, everything. So you got to be on top of it. And it's going to be even worse this year uh, with uh, just more big teams added in. Uh, more smaller teams are coming in that have got good stuff, like I just said. And uh, it's going to be tough, man. I, I don't know. I, uh, I It's good. The series is great. It's healthy. I, obviously, I don't even know how many cars are going to be at Daytona. We don't get the entry list till next week. But it'll be interesting to see a lot, a lot of cars. I bet I heard over 45. Uh, but I, I don't know. You never know. I mean, that's quite a bit going home, and that's going to that'll hurt. You know, when you don't make these races, you don't get paid a dime, and that sucks. And then probably you got to do a deal with your sponsor to figure out about the funding they gave you. You know, who knows? So it's not a good situation. And I don't want anybody to miss the race because I know how hard it is and how much we all rely on, you know, the purse to get us there and keep us there and go the next week. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be probably the most challenging year ever. And then uh, you asked about SVG. Obviously, I don't know the guy at all. I mean, I never even met him. Um, I obviously know he won Chicago. He did great there. I know he's been on the Chevy Sim. And he was uh, three-tenths faster than us at Coda the other day. So it, the, the time we worked on it, the, we just started at Coda. Uh, this year so with all our stuff and once we got our files and a car in there and all that but uh yeah i think just try to keep tuning on that and make it even better and hopefully it'll be realistic as it is in there but uh yeah i'm sure it'll be tough on the road courses i, I have no idea how to do on the ovals uh but we'll see i'm sure it'll be i mean he'll be in fast equipment uh so that he, he'll have that going for him so now Getting away from your competition and focusing on the 51 team. So give me a sense of what your goals are coming into this year. I mean, do we have a goal as far as top tens? Because as we said, you didn't get any last year. Or is it make the playoffs? What What are you expecting out of your, your 51 crew this year? I definitely want to win another race. I will obviously want top tens, top fives, all that stuff. I mean, just go like hell every week. You know, no holds barred. I sometimes do the opposite of what the competition does. See what happens at the end. If they take tires, maybe you stay out and you save your set. Maybe you gamble on fuel. Different things. You got to take risk when you're, you know, in a less smaller team. And it's the, you know, the, the odds are against you for sure. But uh, like I said already, looking for the challenge. I love racing and the competition aspect of it is, is what keeps you going and the drive. So, uh, we're going to give it all we got. We, we've got four intermediate short track cars that are built and rent. And then we got two speedway, two road courses. And so I hope, uh, we'll have one extra car in that, uh, short track intermediate deal. So hopefully that'll help us just stay ahead. Uh, you know, cause when you wreck and you're, you're in our shoes, it's tough to build another car and get it fixed and keep racing week in and week out with a small group of people. But. We got to be the best we can and hopefully just have some, some better luck, uh, momentum on our side this time. All right, Jeremy, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to visit with us and give us a preview of the 2024 season with the 51 team. I wish you and your guys the best of luck in 2024. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it, Kyle. Thank you.